here we go, here we go, here we go. Welcome to the RP Gamers Experience. I'm messing with some dials and moving some things around. My name is Phil, AKGC Serving from RPGamer.com. And this is a special episode of the RP Gamers Experience, where today we're going to be going over Steam sales. Uh, and before uh, I can, I need to set the stage for why we picked the games we picked to talk to you about with the current Steam sales that are going on. So RP Gamers Experience is a show we're going to be doing uh, in seasons. Each season runs half a year, uh, where we're going to be going over the very best that the industry has had to offer over the years, uh, whether it's a cool dungeon crawler, from the way back when or a uh, top 10 or even a top game that came out 10 years ago or an indie that just came out that brings something new and yet old to the field. Uh, I love covering games that no one's currently uh, talking about uh, here on the RP Gamers Experience. So the games that we've chosen for this Steam sale are games that are pretty much on our docket to talk about at some point over the next year 2021 so uh we're going to be showing these off to you and if you want to buy on some of these and jump in on them then you'll have uh you'll be ready for our shows when they come out now part of the rp gamers experience is we do a deep dive in a game give you our deep impressions of it uh go through some of the mechanics show you how that game works and give you some tips and tricks along the way uh so uh so so again if you have the game because you bought it on sale and sitting in your backlog, that's a great time to bring it back up after you watch our show. Or you can join us on the show and share your tips and tricks because you've already played it. This is a community experience, right? This isn't just some show that I put together and throw out there and it's a one-way trip. Uh, this is something that goes back and forth. And in fact, if you happen to be uh, on the, the, the stream right now as I'm going through these games... And uh, you have some comments to share about some of these games. Put them in the Twitch chat and I'll read them right here. And after we're done with this show, this will eventually be uh, uploaded uh, pretty quickly today over to YouTube uh, so other people can get on board uh, with these sales. So what you say about these games and why you like them uh, will be an important part of their purchasing decisions, right? That's the community thing. So get ready because we've got quite a few games to go through. We won't be spending too long in any one game. So if you have comments about uh, the games that I'm going to be uh, firing off here, you want to make sure you're on the keyboard and get your comments in. I'll be looking for those before I move on to the next game. But before we get started, of course, let me introduce the co-host, Tiger. Look at that face, right? You just gotta love that look. He is such a happy host. Look at that. That is a face full of love right there. All right, down cat. Um, all right, so let's do this. Let's do our Steam sales. I hope you guys are ready. Welcome, Don Razor. Glad to see you again. Uh, better late than never. No, you're not too late. Just j The party's just, just started. And by the way, after this show, we'll be doing a few hours of Let's Play. So uh, feel free to, uh, to stay on uh, the Twitch channel here as we got more content coming up. And then later tonight... Uh, cause I'll, I'll do streaming for a while. We'll take a break. And then later tonight, Michael Apps will be live streaming while we do our Q and a podcast. He does his Q and a podcast. I'll be on there as well as a guest. Uh, and then he's going to be doing more live streaming later on tonight. So if you like games, there's a lot going on right here at RP Gamers Twitch channel. So without further ado, let's see if I can click on the right thing here. That's going to get uh you know our steam page is pulled up we're not gonna start with that we're gonna start with this one uh but yes uh this is just me pulling up a, a browser here and we're gonna take a look i'll get these zoomed in here so we can get a better look at these but uh and we don't want my face taking up so much space here we'll just kind of put me in the corner there all right so let's do this so so again these are games that we're gonna be that we're currently planning on playing through uh this season give me just one second we only have the most professional broadcast here let me close the door because the bird has decided to make some noise yeah stuff we should have done before we started recording and streaming and all of that and we will totally not edit that out all right i am back so our first game is sunless sea uh and actually it's sunless sea and the uh the sequel is sunless skies 
Now, uh, this is, uh, the, well, let's read the words of, uh, of uh, the developer here. Lose your mind, eat your crew, die. Take the helm of your steamship and set sail for the unknown. Sunless Sea is a game of discovery, loneliness, and frequent death set in the award-winning Victorian Gothic universe of fallen London. So uh, this is this is a definitely a roguelike game uh, where you're setting out into the uh, into the seas to uh, to try to survive and 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 uh, I don't want to give away too much of the plot here, but you are you're trying to get out there and uh, and survive, uh, and it's got that very Lovecraftian Cthulhu type of feel going on to it. You will be making some very very tough decisions as you progress. Um, as to who is going to live, who's going to die, and what sacrifices you have to make to make it to your goal. Uh, there, let's just say there's not a whole lot of happy endings. Um, but if you're into the darker theme stuff, it's really cool. And I remember with the sequel, uh, Sunless Skies, I think it was Alex who reviewed it, RP Gamer, gave it a really good score. That's what got me interested. And that was uh, just reading his review is what got this game added to our schedule for the next year. So we will be playing both Sunless Skis and Sunless Skies, at least we're planning to. Uh, the games normally cost a total, as you can see here, of $43.98, 57% off if you're going to get the, the duo. So you can get those for $18.94 if you want both. Of course, you can just get Sunless Sea by itself for $6.45. An excellent deal. Uh, Don Razor says, I just blew my entire check on the Steam sale. Well, that that. Steam sales will do that. They are they are wallet busters, especially with good deals like this. Moving on to the next game. This is uh, Divine Divinity. Uh, this one is an epic role-playing game with hack and slash action, offering a huge world to explore and thousands of items to investigate, trade, and use. Uh, this was developed and published by Larian Studios back September 20, 2002. You know, there's there's no shortage of action looter games that are out there, Diablo-style type of games out there. But I want to work my way through the Divinity series properly. you got Divine Divinity, Beyond Divinity, uh, Divinity 2. And then, of course, you eventually get to Divinity Original Sin. So I slowly work my way. They're all beefy games and the such. Uh, but I liked how they did something different with almost every game. Uh, there's a lot of world building going on here. I feel like the world building is a little bit deeper than some of the other counterparts that are out there. And uh, and and you know what? You guys can get this at a steal right now. Normally it's $5.99 because it's an older game. But they got it 90% off. So you can get that game for $0.59. Cents. That's, that's just insane. That's insane. You can't even, you can't even buy a can of Coke for that much. So it's an absolute uh, steal. Uh, they do have a package with with uh, uh, you got Beyond Divinity, Divide Divinity, and Divinity Two: The Developers Cut. So those are all your old schooler, old schooler games, the older Divinity games before the uh, the turn based ones. You can get all three of those for two dollars and ninety nine cents. That's ninety percent off. And then Divinity Original Sin uh, Two Eternal Edition. They got a forty five percent discount on that. Um, which looks like it includes just about, well, it includes Beyond Divinity, Divine Divinity, uh, Divinity 2, and uh, Divine, wait, Divinity Original Sin. and So it looks like it's the whole enchilada for $49.49. So at the very least, you can grab these older ones really super cheap. And if you want to get into the really awesome turn-based Original Sin games, uh, you can add those on for a lot more. Uh, they're a good deal either way, and we'll be playing them. Uh, so if you're following following us there at the RP Gamers Experience, uh, we'll be we'll definitely be doing that. So check it out uh, and whatnot. Uh, let's see here, a couple of recommendations from Don. I'm going to just sprinkle uh, sprinkle some of these in. Thief One and Two under a dollar. Dragon's Dogma. I believe we're going to be talking about that one later on. And Tron 2.0 and Dark Messiah, $2.50 he recommends. Moving on, the Mass Effect games. Boy, I remember when Mass Effect first came out on the Xbox. And I was watching the trailers. They were so awesome. I, I just wanted to buy an Xbox just for this. But I've always been a PlayStation fan. I didn't need another console. And, and I don't think the Xbox did a whole lot else that I cared about. But Mass Effect, being a Star Trek fan especially... Uh, you know, it's just the, definitely the bomb. Uh, very happy when years later they decide to finally uh, release these on the PC. So uh, we got the whole Mass Effect 
uh, trilogy or quadrilogy, if you can include Andromeda. Um, but that is that is on there. Now, we will be doing the Mass Effect games at some point uh, this year is the plan. Uh, they're on the RP Gamers experience. And you can see here, a lot of them are on discount. We're focusing on Mass Effect 2. That's considered by many to be the best. You can get that 50% off from $20 down to 10 So I highly recommend that. Lots of good things to say about Mass Effect. It kind of sells itself. Um, but I would definitely check that out. Andromeda! Ah, yeah. We don't talk about Andromeda. The next thing on our docket is Fable and Y'all speaking of Xbox games. Fable uh, Anniversary. Now, oh, 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 let me read the, the description. For every choice, a consequence. Fully remastered with HD visuals and audio, auto, audio, Fable Anniversary is a stunning rendition of the original game that will delight faithful fans and new players alike. The all-new heroic difficulty setting will test the mettle of even the most hardcore Fable fan. Uh... So, uh, Fable Anniversary, uh, so I remember, again, this was another game that was Xbox only, and I forget the developer's name, but I'm sure most of you have heard the story. This was originally really, well, this was released on PC, I think, in September 12, 2014, way back in the day on the Xbox. But the original, the original guy was very much uh, making all these promises how this was going to be the definitive RPG with, with certain mechanics, you know, and the such that, uh, that um, never came to fruition. With that all being said, it's been brought to the PC, it's been remastered, and if you take it on its own merits, most people say if you can get away from the hype, it is a decent action RPG on its own, and it's not terribly long. So it makes a good palate cleanser between some of the more epic RPGs that we have on the docket throughout the year. So that's why we have a, fan, a Fable Anniversary on the list. Normally, uh, $35, 75% off brings that down to $8.74. More if you want to add in some of the uh, the DLC. So there you go. You can you can grab that right there. Um, Don says I've heard bad things about Fable Anniversary. There's a review below saying why. Well, we won't go into reviews. I've heard uh, mostly good things. And I'm sure some bad things, and uh, I guess we're gonna find out together. Uh, let's see. Well, you mentioned Dragon Dogma. Here we go. We got a little age gate. What do you mean I can't... What? I, I can't look at Dragon's Dogma because I'm not old enough. That is funny. You know, again, only the highest quality uh, productions here at RP uh, Gamer. See, I can uh, I, I can own it, but I'm not allowed to look at the page uh, or whatever have you. We're just going to make a day. That is totally not my birthday. Wish it was. All right, Dragon's Dogma, Dark Arisen. Set in a huge open world, Dragon's Dogma, Dark Arisen presents a rewarding action combat experience what hasn't been said about dragon dogma before it is it is one of those games that came out and it was pretty well received but it had some drawbacks long travel time uh some hiccups some problems and so it probably didn't do as good critically as it, it should um i don't know about the sales without looking those up but um I had a lot of uh, you know friends over the years who would go back and play the single man. This really was a good game. This really was a good game. And then eventually, you know, they did release uh, you know a remastered edition uh, and the such, and it's uh, that's what they're doing on the Switch. Of course, the PC kind of got its own bit of in a way. PC is always remastered compared to the console counterpart. Again, speaking of, I forgot to mention this is one of those games that originally came out on console, and then we got it on the computer later on. And the computer, I think, is always going to be the better experience because you can mess with the graphics and the such so uh open world game with a lot of exploring to do uh an interesting story um but it, a lot of interesting systems at play one of the things that particularly appeals to me from what i've heard is that when you're fighting the monsters there's some um shadow of the colossus feel in there you got to go up and and beat up on certain parts of the monsters uh and a little bit of a uh, monster hunter feel to it in terms of how this role the combat feels not surprising given that it's cut it's coming from capcom the developers you know, of Monster Hunter, a Monster Hunter world. So uh, a lot of exciting things, uh, you know, going on in that game. And I've never actually sat down and played, even though I, I got it, uh, you know, on the PlayStation, uh, bought it later on the PC. So I'm looking forward to playing, for playing this game for the RP Gamers experience. Uh, normally $30, you can get that 70% off for $9, uh, unless you get this Masterwork collection, whatever the hell that is. But uh, but yeah, looks like a really, really great game, an exciting addition 
Uh, Don, uh, let's see here. Don says, oh, you're too young for Dragon's Dogma. Shield your eyes. Inventory management was bad too. And your pawns, which are some uh, NPCs that you can bring along with you uh, that will give you little tips, but sometimes they just don't know when to shut up. Um, uh, they can be a bit of a bit of a problem, but uh, overall, still a great game. Monsters have weak points that sometimes take multiple stages to kill. It's got the best combat system of any pure RPG we've seen. So I'm really looking forward to that. I'm usually pretty critical of real time RPGs. Uh, uh, let me clarify: deeper RPGs like good stories, good plots, and they have you know a big action system because they usually do one way or not the other, or they compromise. Uh, so we'll see. We'll see. I'm looking forward to playing this one. It is... Yeah, Capcom always nails, nails combat. They do have a good pedigree in combat. Here's another game I'm probably way too young to see. Oh, man. This 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 thing is just evil today. It's just ornery. All right, Risen. The island of Furanga needs a new hero, you. Delve into a gritty, raw, and atmospheric fantasy world in which every action has a consequence. In the epic world of Risen, filled with mysterious earthquakes, fearsome monsters, and unimaginable treasures, forge your path with the sword, learn the art of staff. Uh, and you can see, released October 30th, 2009, developed by Piranha Bytes, published by THQ Nordic. And uh, normally on Steam for ten bucks, you grab this guy for two dollars fifty cents. Uh, it's I'm not the biggest fan of open world games myself, but I was told Phil you need to give this one a shot. It is now on the list because of that. I believe it's part of our CRPG club as well. Uh, but people have told me this is a compelling, uh, compelling RPG experience. As you saw in the comments there, a lot, lot kind of going on there, a lot to explore. You know, in the such. So uh, they just announced a new expansion for Outward. Yeah, Outward, uh, you know, another similar open world game. And I actually played that for a write-up for RP Gamer. You can go check that out at rpgamer.com. Always encourage you to go over and check out our site. And uh, I got a write-up on Outward. I enjoyed uh, the time that I spent with Outward. I'm not sure I would stick around long enough to actually complete the game. That's my problem with some of these open world games. Hard to stay focused. But uh, but Risen does look interesting. It's an older game. It's one of our top games. Actually, I think the reason this one got chosen is it was one of the top uh, games of the year uh, voted by the RP Gamer staff uh, on the year it came uh, came out for release. So some of the games that we pick for the RP Gamers experience are chosen by the staff members uh, in their in their game of the year awards and the such. So gonna 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 see what I think about it when I jump into risen for a whopping two dollars and 49 cents all right another game i'm definitely definitely not old enough to uh play apparently just reloading works really well vampire the masquerade bloodlines was another game chosen by our staff um when it came out it was released originally november 16 2004 vampire the masquerade bloodlines delivers a new type of rpg experience one that blends all the core elements of a traditional rpg with the graphical richness, immediacy, and brutal combat of a first-person action game, the game plunges players into the dark and gritty vampire uh, underworld of modern... Oh, 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 modern what? You, you dropped off there. Modern day LA is a creature of the night. Players will develop their characters' powers, interact with other characters, and embark on a story-driven quest as they battle mortals and other vampires in an incredible array of vampire powers and weapons. Powered by Valve's source technology, the game is based on White Wolf's popular Vampire the Masquerade pen and paper RPG series and its official clans. Uh, original, or normally goes for $20 on sale for 50% off for $9.99. So, uh, Vampire Masquerade's Bloodline, uh, you know, considered by many to be a classic, classic RPG experience. You know, I'm always excited uh, to play games that are set in pre-established worlds, whether they're in books or in other pen and paper RPGs. Because in my mind, that, that means that a lot of the heavy lifting for the writers is already taken care of. And they can they and the rest of the staff can focus on the other elements of the game because they've already got this found this great foundation to work with. Uh, and a vampire masquerade being a, a you know a, you know a, a pen and paper RPG probably gives them a very rich world to work with. So uh, obviously the graphics are a little rough because it, it's a product of its time. Those early 3D polygons or early 2000 uh, 3D polygons, but from what I understand, the story and everything else that's there uh, helps to make up for it. As you can see, overwhelmingly positive reviews uh, and a great addition to the RP Gamer experience. So we're looking forward to covering that one. Uh, 
Let's see, Dawn says, Bloodlines, this was the one I was forgetting. Be sure to get the unofficial patch. So there we go. All right, we knock another one off the list and we come to Mountain Blade Warband. Now, I, I'm not quite sure. I'm a little, uh, we're going to take a look at the entire series, I think, because I'm not sure if we're actually, Warband I, might be the one we're playing. Originally released uh, in a tour land asunder, uh, asunder by incessant warfare, it is time to assemble your own band of hardened warriors and enter the fray. Lead your men in battle, expand your realm, and claim the ultimate price, the throne of Colradia. Uh, you see overwhelmingly positive reviews, 98% positive on Steam, released originally March 31st, 2010 by Tale Worlds Entertainment. Um, Mountain Blade Games, I played the, uh, or I think it was the original back in the day, I don't know if it's called, I'm a little confused on the gaming, nomen or the naming nomenclature here, what's an expansion, what's a sequel when it comes to Mountain Blade, because there was expansions and stuff like that, but my whole point is, I had spent some time in the original Mountain Blade, this is a true open world uh, experience and one that feels more realistic. There's not magic. There's not dragons. This is down to earth, nitty gritty, you know, type of medieval stuff. Uh, but you're, you start, I started out as a lone soldier and worked my way up and eventually got my own little army going and would go over and take over towns. This is a true open world experience. I mean, I, from what I played, there was no main, main plot line and main story to go through. It reminded me of Daggerfall. I mean, Daggerfall is kind of a main story, but I never paid attention to it. It was really just going to these randomized towns and dungeons and working my way through things. And that's Mountain Blade feels like that, but much, in my mind anyways, much better than Daggerfall in terms of its open world randomized uh, experience. So... Uh, it is is going to be a different RPG experience. Normally, nineteen ninety nine for Warband, you can get seventy five percent off for four ninety nine. So that is super super cool. Uh, you can get the Legacy Collection, which includes Napoleonic Wars with Fire and Sword and some other stuff, for a few bucks more. Probably worth it for six ninety seven. Um, and I own these over in GOG. So GOG may have a similar sale. I usually am a big fan of GOG, but we're kind of focusing on Steam right now to avoid confusion, uh, you know, and the such. And Bannerlord must be uh, Mountain Blade 2, Bannerlord. I think they're still working on that. I don't think that one's out just yet. But yeah, yeah, check that out. Uh, Mountain Blade uh, Mountain Blade Warband. No comments on that one. We will continue to move forward with Grim Dawn. Enter an apocalyptic fantasy world where humanity is on the brink of extinction. Iron is valued above gold and trust is hard earned. This ARPG features complex character development, hundreds of unique items, crafting and quest with choice and consequences. You know, so in the world of action RPGs, you have uh, you have uh, Diablo three, which is kind of in many people's eyes the reigning king. It's highly accessible. You know, people like me who are a bit more casual can play it no problem and get into some tough content and do whatever. Where the hardcore people are still finding satisfaction there and doing in the speed runs. Uh, but it's kind of uh, an every man's game. But some people complain that, that it wasn't hardcore enough. Some people complain it, it went away from the older Diablo games. So that's where Path of Exile comes in. Path of Exile is a huge, massive action RPG with huge skill trees and huge systems. And it's got all the meat on the bone you could possibly want. Uh, and it's, it's, it is very, very, very deep. And, and you got to be good into theory crafting and stuff to make a high end character. And I'll be honest, it's too much for me. It is very intimidating. I don't have enough time in the day. I want to play other games, but that game, if you're looking for something that's really hardcore action RPG, that's over here. Grim Dawn, uh, you know, fits in the middle. It, it is, uh, it is, it is beefier, and, and it's got more meat on the bone, so to speak, than Diablo three. But you're not going to have to be OCD about all these different details like you would uh, with uh, with um, Path of Exile. It's a really, really great uh, action RPG created by Crate Entertainment. Uh, that just has so much going for it. And with the expansion, they've added even more content and a better end game. Uh, there's just a lot there to love and to like, and, and there's just so much fun to be had. You've got a really cool class system where you can mix and match skills from a second class to create your own unique, uh, you know, unique thing, uh, as well as different items that you're going to find that's going to change your build as you go along, you know, as well. Uh, just a very well-balanced. It's even got, and I see over here, it's got a really huge... 
uh, constellation. I believe this is the passive skill tree system uh, that gives you all kinds of boosts and stuff as you go through. Uh, but there's just a whole bunch going on, just a ton, ton going on. So uh, my my wife had played this and she just played this for hours and hours and hours. Really looking forward to this. Uh, released February 25th, 2016 by Crate Entertainment. Let's talk about the price, of course. Originally uh, $25. You can get the Definitive Edition normally for $40. Uh, 75% off of the base game. That brings down $624. If you want all the expansions with it, it's going to cost you $25.48. It looks like they're not giving a really great discount on the DLC. Uh, but this is a great way to jump into it for now, see if you like it, and then you can decide if you want to buy the expansion and the DLC afterwards because they do offer all like the Crucible and a whole new arena and, and stuff to do there. Just really, really great game, when, especially once you add in the, the DLCs. So definitely go and check those out. You might save a little bit more money if you just buy these DLCs separately because these are showing 25% off and this is showing 15, 30, I don't know. Steam sales sometimes get a little confusing. But I can't recommend Grim Dawn enough. And let's just take a look at what we say in the comments now. Oh my God, it's in the autumn sale. Uh, on uh, There's an RPG tab and there are subgenres at the top of that. Action RPG, RPG, RPG strategy, etc., etc. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. I, I don't want to mess around with it here just now, but that's really cool that they, they've gone in and they've broken down the RPGs by types. Uh, let's see here. Reading your comments here. Sorry if I'm knocking myself off camera here while I'm trying to read the cam uh, comments. I got to bring these things closer. Again, only the highest quality production here at my house. Uh, we're going to put that a little bit closer so I can actually see it. So, uh, let's see. Dawn says, I got like 10 games. Less that pocket isn't on sale. Dang, it's such a good title for early access. Lofter says, uh, Nikuno 2 is $10. It's bad but it's still a full price game. And Dawn says there's a ton of expensive games selling for $3 or less, Sleeping Dog Saints Row 4, and I bought both Dead Space games for $5. So yeah, a lot of good lot of good sales in Inukuni 2. Yeah, a lot of good stuff going out there. And again, guys, if you see anything about these games that I'm currently talking about, as I'm talking about them, put your comments in because I'll share what you think if you play Grim Dawn. Uh, let's get those comments in there. I'll be happy to tell people why they should play it. Have any of you played Neo Scavenger? This is a game where you must survive the wasteland long enough to figure out who you are. Each turn, you must decide where to go, how to scavenge for supplies, and how to deal with anything and everyone you encounter. Uh, this was developed and published by Blue Bottle Games in December 15, 2014. Uh, and uh, survival, kind of a uh, survival sim RPG strategy type of thing uh, with a lot of randomization elements, rogue-like probably type of deal. Um I forget who recommended this one to me. I haven't played this one myself, but uh, I'm always uh, up for some good, tough decision, apocalyptic uh, type of stuff. And I heard this one gets very, very uh, detailed in what you can pick up and what you find, whether it's pieces of fabric or whatever have you. You can see this guy just basically <laughs> looks like he made a patchwork quilt here. Um, but yeah, yeah, there's there's a lot of uh, interesting elements going on here. So we'll see about that one. Neo Scavenger is $15 normally, but you can get 75% off for a little under four bucks. So that'll be coming soon. Moving on, we have Battle Chasers Night War. It's an RPG inspired by classic console greats featuring deep dungeon diving, turn-based combat presented in a classic JRPG format, and a rich story driven by the exploration of the world. Developed by Airship Syndicate, uh, published by THQ Nordic, uh, released on October 3rd, 2017. You know, I've heard good things and I've heard eh, some, some big drawbacks on this game, you know? Uh, but it snuck its way onto our list, so it looks like we will probably be playing this. I would say this one's a little more iffy, probably 50-50 shot. We'll actually see it on the show, but it is currently on the uh, the short list of, of, of options, so uh, don't be surprised to see it pump up next year. I personally love the art style. I love cartoons. I love uh, manga. I love anime. So, uh, I, you know, I just I love the intro, and you see those graphics though that style bleed into the game and it definitely makes it look really cool and interesting at least to me uh so we'll see but uh that is normally thirty dollars you can get it for seven dollars and fifty cents uh looks like we don't have any big comments on that one let me check my other screen See what they say nothing on there so we will move on to 
Greedfall. Engage in a core RPG experience and forge the destiny of a new world seeping with magic and filled with riches. Lost secrets and fantastic creatures. Would diplomacy, deception, and force become part of a living, evolving war? Influence its course and shape your history. So this is another game that may not make it onto the show, but it is on the list, uh, you know, so it might end up on like the second half of the year or it might end up on 2022's docket. Um, but it, it's definitely one of those games, again, got some lovers, got some people who thought it wasn't so great, uh, but it looks really, really good. And one of my friends was talking to me about, he just wouldn't stop talking about how much he loved it. So it is currently uh, sitting on there. But I think uh, some of the uh, mixed reviews it got helped it to go on sale a little bit faster because it's normally a 50 bucks game. Didn't come out that long ago at all, but now you can get it for 20, 20 bucks. And for two bucks more, you can get some uh, extra gear. Hey, wink, wink, nod, nod. Uh, but yeah, looks like a very, it looks like a very interesting game. Looks like it's got some real world influence there from maybe uh, early America founding. Kind of got that vibe to it. I haven't played it myself, so I don't know a whole lot about it directly, but it does look very interesting. And we're going to see how well it works if we can get it on the docket. Next one is a game I have played, and that is Wasteland 2, the director's cut. From the producer of the original Fallout comes Wasteland 2. With over 80 hours of gameplay, deck out your Ranger squad with devastating weaponry. Test the limits of your strategy skills and bring justice to the Wasteland. The choices are yours. But so are the consequences. Wasteland 2 was developed and published by NXile Entertainment. Released September 19, 2014. I remember when this was on the Kickstarter way back in the day. And I was one of those Kickstarter supporters. Uh, yeah, no. Uh, Wasteland was the original game way back in the day on DOS. Uh, and and the idea that they, they, they revisited this series bazillions of years later. It inspired Fallout. Uh, and, and now here we are years later with a true remake. And, and it's uh, it's really well done. This is the director's cut, so you got updated graphics and the such. But uh, I, I, I played quite a bit of it, maybe like a dozen hours or so, and I enjoyed my time with it. So I'm looking forward to playing this uh, further and uh, hopefully uh, actually completing it. But there's a lot going on. It's a tactical RPG and tactical RPGs with a great combat system. Tactical RPGs are some of my favorite games in the entire world. I love strategy tactical RPGs. So you're going to get that here. Some inventory management, a night, you know, the post-apocalyptic things are a little bit worn out, uh, but, uh, you know, I think they do a good job with the writing here. I really enjoyed the writing. So hopefully we're going to see it. Has anybody else played Wasteland 2? Anybody on our stream? Hopefully. Uh, let's see here. Can you show Dragon Extinction? It's on sale. Sure, why not? May not make it on the show. It just might. Uh, well, I feel like Don's gonna like keep pushing till we get it on the show one day. Enter a fantasy world where humanity has brought dragons to the brink of extinction. This ARPG features hundreds of unique items, crafting, and procedural generated dungeons. By the way, did we did we mention the price of Wasteland Two? Oh, give me one second. Let me go back to that again. Only the most professional. Uh, Thirty dollars normally. Uh, Wasteland Two is seven dollars and fifty cents. All right, back to the dragon extinction. Uh, this was uh, developed by uh, Zypher Games and published by the same, released uh, October 16th, 2020. And uh, hopefully uh, Dawn Razor can tell us why this is such an excellent game because I have zero experience with this one. I did see just a tiny bit of a trailer and it's got this, uh, it's definitely got this art style. Reminds me of the game For the King if you played that, where it's kind of like, it's 3D graphics, polygon graphics, but it's like a low polygon count that kind of invokes a vibe of older school gaming, but still with all the flashy post-processing graphical effects that uh, lets you know, yes, this is indeed a modern game. Um, Dawn Razor says it's like Monster Hunter, but replace monster hunting with dragon diving. I almost thought for a second it said driving. So that's 10% off, normally $15. You can grab that for uh, $14.50. He also mentions that it has Dark Souls combat in classes. Ooh. So something definitely to check out. And again, that is Dragon Extinction. A game that I'm just barely old enough to play. Uh, high up, actually, on our docket is Graveyard Keeper. We're actually going to be covering this one earlier uh, in the season, uh, season one. This is going to be an early game. 
Uh, Build and Manage a Medieval... It might even be the first show um, that had to come out. Build and Manage a Medieval Graveyard While Facing Ethical Dilemmas and Making Questionable Decisions. Welcome to Graveyard Keeper, the most inaccurate medieval cemetery sim of the year. Developed by Lazy Bear Games, published by Tiny Build, and just released some DLC uh, content, like a little mini expansion. But... Uh, Graveyard Keeper, if you like Stardew Valley, if you like Rune Factory, if you like Harvest Moon, and you like some Grim Dark, uh, Graveyard Keeper is your cup of tea. It is a very cute, uh, I love the art style in this, a little bit of a low saturation because of the theme, but de uh, detailed uh, ice, uh, 2D graphics. And um, you, are, you are Graveyard Keeper. Uh, basically, you're, the story that starts out is you're a guy who's falling asleep and he wakes up in this he's a modern guy but he wakes up in this like medieval world and he doesn't know how he got there and and he wakes up there's people saying hey you're the graveyard keeper you gotta go take care of the graveyard and he eventually starts putting it together maybe that's what he he has to kind of play the role and keep investing in order to figure out how to get back home uh you spend a lot of time figuring out what bodies you're going to bury which bodies you're just going to throw in the river um because uh, you want to bury bodies that are mostly holy and have done good deeds in die life and not so many bad deeds in order to make your graveyard better. In the meantime, you've got a lot of production you're going to want to do, a lot of crafting you want to do. One of the cool things about the game, and I don't see anything on the screenshots here, uh, but you got this little farm right here, or not farm, but crap, you know, this, you do have some crops you grow, but that's not really the focus. But you got, uh, you got basically your house and your workshops here, and you can actually uh, recruit zombies. That will do a lot of the boring chores for you so you don't have to keep clicking and building stuff. It's really kind of cool. It's got a big uh, uh, crafting tree where you'll learn new skills from the experience points you'll learn by doing various activities. It's got a light combat system just like a room factory does. It's just got a lot, and it's got a really cool uh, dark comedy thing going through it. Uh, if you like the talking skull from um, uh, Torment... Uh, whatever that's called. Uh, boy. Oh, it's driving me crazy. But you'll like the, the donkey here. He's just, he's just, he's just funny. But yeah, Morty. That's the talking skull. Yeah, I think there's one of those too. But it's just really funny. It's a cute little game. Normally $20 for the base game, $6 and change for the base game. And the collector's edition, um... I would probably just look down at the DLC and not worry about the art book and the soundtrack. Stranger Sin is 66% off, making it uh, from $10 to three and change. Game of Crone just came out. That's the new DLC. That's still kind of 10 bucks. Looks like he's got some mixed reviews there. But the base game, it's very much, that's what I played. And you can actually, a lot of these games, by the way, of course, you can play these on consoles as well. I'm showing the Steam sales. There may be console counterparts. Uh, and you're more than welcome, of course, to play the games however you want. And you can join in on the conversations when we're streaming them uh, during the show and during our Let's Play. So that is Graveyard Keeper. And our third to last game here, Queen's Wish the Conqueror. At last, the queen has given you power and freedom. The cost, you must rebuild her empire. Will you? In this epic indie fantasy adventure, you are free to explore, fight for fame and power, and shape the world as you choose. Escape to an unpredictable open-ended story in cunning tactical combat in Queen's Wish, The Conqueror. So uh, this is developed and published by Spiderweb Software, uh, released originally September 11, 2019. This is... Uh, for the most part, I mean, it's very indie. As you can see, an indie, uh, an indie RPG. Uh, the gentleman who makes it, he does a lot of the games by himself, or he gets one or two other people that he hires to help him out. But it's very small. But there's a lot of good writing here, a lot of good, interesting systems. You are the son or daughter of the queen, and you're a bit spoiled. So she's gonna, she's gonna make you go out and do some work that a prince or princess should, which means going out and running part of the other another part of the country for her a part of the country that's been in a bit of rebellion and some other fiefdom kingdoms that had an agreement that haven't been keeping up their end of the bargain how will you handle it will you come down with an iron boot on people's throats will you try to be the diplomat uh will you just give in will you betray your queen your mother or will you support what's been happening uh you're gonna have to a lot of uh, a lot of stuff going on and you're gonna have to make some tough choices at the same time you're also going to be building up towns to give your party members uh better access to gear so they can handle bigger problems down the road it's got a lot of great systems going for it 
uh, it, you know, some people complain about the uh, the graphics because they do look like they're from 1990s. Uh, but that also lends it to be in a very clean look as well. Normally, uh, that is $20, uh, offering for 40% off for $12. Apparently got a couple of friends who want this game. Uh, Mr. Miki and Mr. Spear Ombris. Uh, well, now would be a nice time to pick those up. So you can get the for $12. And the next to last one, Dragon Age. So, Remember, these are all games that are going to be showing up on the RP Gamers Experience. Our official shows start at the beginning of the year, Season 1. Right now, we're kind of doing pilots or Season 0, however you want to look at it. And every every season, I'm, uh, we're probably going to be doing a theme. So our our title for Season 1 is Age of the Dragons, right? And you can bet this is what has inspired it, Dragon Age. Um so we have a whole bunch of, of, of Dragon Age games that are on sale. We're going to be trying to get through them all in the first half of this year. Uh, so we have Dragon Age Ultimate Edition, normally $30. You can get that bad boy for under $5. Um, I don't know what the Origins Awaken. I don't know. What, oh, that's an expansion pack. Origins Awakening is expansion for $5. Um, but I think the Ultimate Edition includes it. So get that for four fifty and save $0.50 cents to get more. Uh, Dragon Age Inquisition goes from 40 bucks to 12 bucks. Dragon Age 2, normally 20 bucks, it's 8 bucks. Dragon Age uh, 2 DLC bundle, a couple more bucks. So all the Dragon Age games, the entire trilogy, along with an expansion or two, uh, is on sale right now. You can grab those games. What do you say? If, if, if you're one of those people who haven't heard about Dragon Age, uh, you know, the series has had its ups and downs, but the original Dragon Age was definitely about making a character, making tough choices, and going through a really, really deep uh, an awesome story. The original Dragon Age uh, Ultimate Edition, anyways, released October 26, 2010. And, um, oh, includes nine content packs. I'm sure not all those are story. But, yeah, it, it, it's, it's developed by BioWare uh, and published by EA. Uh, but just really rich story. Uh, just a really great experience. Uh, you can put 100 hours in this game, no problem. And then you'll want to go and play a different character and try it from a different perspective. And my favorite part is it has tons of blood. Okay, like, okay, you can turn this off, but why would you? The first dungeon, not dungeon, I was in someone's house and you know, like, go kill some rat, go kill that rat. That's a typical RPG thing, right? Go kill the rat. Well, I go to kill the rat and my character comes back and says the job's done and he's covered in blood from head to toe because that rat was just one big blood. I, that's what I remember. But no, it's it's a really good, really good story, good combat system, a lot going on there. I'm looking forward to officially playing this and talking about this at the RP Gamers Experience on the Age of Dragons Season 1. Uh, I'm excited. I'm excited. This is going to be great. Uh, every, and last but not least, probably should have done Dragon Age last. Again, this is only the, the most professional production. Uh, Gaijun the Re. Gaijin 3 is a mass 3D single-person RPG developed by Aragon Info and Tech Shanghai, a subsidiary, whatever, who cares. As the latest hit of the Gaijin series, it boasts more free and smooth combat experience with a real-time combat system. Boy, I swear these Chinese don't know how to write a, a blurb. All right. Developed by... And published by... Blah, 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 released December 14th, 2018. Um, okay. So I forget who recommended this game to me, but I bought it, I downloaded it, I started playing it. I was just, I was just, I was just blown away. If you played Jade Empire or anything like that uh, with some of the one of those early, you know, kung fu action RPG games, even if you play a little bit of Yakuza or whatever have you, but imagine, you know, Jade uh, Empire meets Final Fantasy, and you've got Gaijin Three. This game is massive. It tells an epic story. It's gorgeous. The design in this game is just is just something else. It, it is it's it, the combat system is fast and fluid, and there's a lot of extra subsystems like what you would see in a Final Fantasy game, like Final Fantasy had the card game and everything else going on. You're gonna see a lot of that, a lot of that here. Hey, just dusk. I'm here to browse RPGs. Well, your kitchen's at the tail end, but you can always go back and, and rewind it. But yeah, that's what we've been doing. We've been going through a bunch of RPGs. And Gaijin 3, 
Um, but ju just just beautiful design. You can see it here. I'm playing this trailer because I want y'all to see just how beautiful this game is. And honestly, the trailer doesn't do it justice. It really, really doesn't. Uh, you know, the, the stream just lacks the quality. But but it's just a beautiful, well done game, and it's really, really nice. Let me turn this up for a second. So, I uh, just wanted to show you nice music there and stuff, but um, it's really, really cool. It's a different experience too because it's it's made in China. It's uh, it's got a totally different feel than your typical Western or Japanese style uh, role playing game. Different feeling to the story. Different value systems. My my wife, who's from a from a different country out there, she watches these Chinese dramas all the time. They're totally different than American soap operas, and they're very different from Japanese television uh, or or anime. And 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 this game encapsulates a lot of of what goes on, uh, you know, in those dramas. It's just fantastical. It's a different experience. It's almost as if. A bunch of people from China just came together and made their own version of uh, a newer action-based Final Fantasy. Uh, you know, so very excited to get this one covered on the RP Gamers experience and hopefully give it some exposure. Uh, and that will be coming up soon. So that's on the docket. It's normally $30, which that was the other thing that blew my mind. This game is so good in many ways. It is better than some of the other Final Fantasies we've gotten where they were asking $60 out of the gate. This game was $30 out of the gate. Uh, and you can get on sale for $18. So, yeah. No, it's it's really, really cool. Um, but check it out. Uh, Gaijin 3. We'll be covering it on the show. I forget what, what dates. But we're still kind of working. We're kind of working on that. But I hope you've enjoyed. Again, uh, these are all games that we are planning on show, uh, playing throughout the first and second season, more or less. Some of them may not make the cut, but most of them will be shown on the first and second season of the RP Gamers Experience. And we hope you can play along, join us in the live stream, ask your ask any questions you may have as, we're, as I'm playing the games, and share your thoughts uh, and your tips and your tricks so we can read them on the air and get them up there. The RP Gamers Experience it happens, we, we stream here live on Twitch every Monday, uh, every Monday night. Sometimes it's a Let's Play, sometimes it's an official episode of the RP Gamers Experience, but both of those times, it's an interactive experience and uh, a fun time that we have together. This is, as a reminder, everybody, this is, this is something here. Uh, let's see here. One of these buttons here. Ha ha. Uh, let's see here. There we go. I'm back. All right. But just as a reminder, uh, I hope you enjoyed this little trip today. If you missed out, if you're just jumping in, don't worry, because you're going to be able to go back and watch from the beginning, and you're going to see what we were talking about as far as games that we're, we were showing that are going to be on our show, that are on sale now, so you can buy them now, and then play them when we're doing the show later on in the year uh, at different points. Uh, we're doing a show that's going to be running every week or every two weeks, and we'll be highlighting different games with different trips, tricks, uh, going through impressions of showing off the mechanics and you can play right alongside with us if you're buying these games while they're on sale. Uh, this is all a production of rpgamer.com, your source for news, reviews, and home to the best gaming community on the net. Uh, you can check out, we have a great Discord community. Go over to rpgamer.com, click on the community tab, go down to Discord and join us. We have a ton of different, uh, we have different streams that come on throughout the week. We have podcasts that come out on a weekly basis. We have the RPG Backtrack, which talks about older games. We got the RPG Cast, which talks about new games we got q a quest which will be live streaming tonight as we're recording where we answer your questions on the air we got a lot of things that are going on. i'm showing up as a guest tonight on that so 